Hey, ladies and gentlemen, CocoSports.com proudly presents Russell A. and its half wrestling show, half morning show, pretty much all BS. And of course, you got your truly sexiest man on all internet wrestling radio. Boom, boom, here's making room live from the RBA, Richmond, Virginia. Of course, join me there way outside the outskirts of Tokyo, Japan. Dave Coco, what's up, brother? Uh, nothing much, man. So, listen, we know a lot of stuff is going on in the world, but for oh, yeah. for 20 minutes to an hour, depending on how much we talk, let's just focus on escapism, and let's just talk entertainment. Be safe, mm-hmm. be safe, be kind, don't lose your humanity. Booms, let's talk about the important stuff, escapism. Yes. AEW Dynamite. Um, we ask win, loss, or tie. What was your feelings about this? Um, anyone in the comments, please feel free to put win, loss, or tie. What you thought of t- this week's AEW Dynamite. And um, boom, boom. It's WrestleMania weekend. It does not feel like WrestleMania weekend. No, it, it does not. Not in the least. Um, but if we're going to rate this AEW show, I'm going to give it a win. Coming to you live from the Nightmare Factory, and I believe it's uh, Atlanta, Georgia, if I remember correctly. Yeah, and um, they're going to be moving the pl- uh, buildings, I think, very sh- soon. I'm not really sure, but I hope they can keep the show going. But obviously, mm-hmm. they're going to listen to the professionals over us two idiots. I'm going to give it a win, but not as strong as the win last week. Just, and then this is going to sound nitpicky, match order. I feel like the main event was first. You know, it felt like after after the first match, it was amazing. And then it was like, oh, the big show is over. You know what I mean? It felt that way. It may, that's how it felt for me. Maybe I'm too much of a big Kenny Omega mark. Maybe the opening match was too awesome. It felt like if you put this in reverse order, it's a better show. And also, um, the segments were amazing, the pre-recorded stuff. And we'll get to that. Mm-hmm. I'm giving it a win, but not as strong as a win as last week. So I'm going to say... Yeah, I, I feel like this show w- was better than last week's because they brought the, uh, I, I, for lack of a better term, live crowd. They had them back. Yeah. Uh, it was a different setting, a little bit more intimate. Uh, and I just, you know, felt, I mean, just those little bitty things, I really felt like helped it. Uh, I don't think it was as good as a couple of weeks ago that first empty show, basically empty arena show that they did. But it was, but I really felt like this one was a step up. Uh, so we started off with, and let me just, um, is not exactly breaking news, but AEW has announced a new, they're they're going to create, they've created a new championship. It's going to be called the TNT Championship. Um, I like this because. It's, it's twofold as TNT is the name of the network that they are on. And remember, the show's name is Dynamite, so you got to think about the explosive TNT. So it seems to make sense, TNT Championship. Uh, they're doing a little mini tournament. Um, they're doing just the... I think there's eight competitors in this one, and the competitors are as follows. Cody, Sean Spears... Darby Allen, Sammy Guevara, Dustin Rhodes, Kip Sabian, Lance Archer, and Colt Cabana. So I, I think a lot of those would not be bad choices for for holding your uh, first ever secondary championship. I hold on. I'll get to that statement in a second. First off, there's people on line complaining about it's called the TNT title. Those people mm-hmm. are a hundred percent wrong. First off, real sports are named after sponsorships, especially NASCAR, especially other stuff. The television championship, TNT, the Dynamite. I think this is effing genius. I love it. But well, it's a little bit more original than like the television championship. Yeah. And it will make and all that I ask, and I think everyone can agree on this, they just take mm-hmm. it seriously. As long as they take it serious, it's good. Where I disagree with Boom Boom, I don't think it has to be it has to be Cody or it has to be larger. If it's not one of those two, you instantly tear down the title. Um, 
There's no fucking way Sean Spears is the first TNT champ and we give a fuck. Let's be completely honest. You know what I mean? Um, you can have him the champ later. It has to feel important. Um, Cody Rhodes is there every week. It's his baby. It makes sense. Lance Archer's a monster. Everyone else is just building up to that. Um, I believe in my heart of hearts, we had this conversation with Chris Jericho. The first champion is the most important champion ever, and you taking titles seriously is very important. Sean Spears gone the first TNT champ. What is he, 1 in 6? 1 in 57? No. It's got to be Cody or it's got to be Archer. And you have to keep it thing. And, and it, what everyone thinks is going to happen, you know, the same an original idea that the TNT title will be defended on television. And the world title goes to pay-per-views, which wouldn't be a bad thing because it makes the world title seem better and it makes the TNT tournament feel better. But here's the thing. My beloved New Japan, WWE, TNA, have all made the mistake of having too many titles and it not mean anything. Do not fall for that thing. And Booms, you 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 can vouch how, how over-the-top romantic and obsessed I am with titles meaning something. Yes, yes, you are. I, I I just think if it doesn't and it, you can be like oh it's just entertainment if what you're fucking going for doesn't matter then don't put it in the fucking story if your championship doesn't matter don't put it in the sport can you imagine a hockey player be like ah it's just a Stanley Cup can you imagine fucking Thanos going ah it's just a couple fucking pebbles no if it's a fucking sport or if it's a story if it's sports or entertainment the goddamn championship should mean something <sighs> Booms, you you know how much it drives me crazy. AEW will make or break this fucking championship because they have to decide. And their world champs in a little bit trouble too. If a third WWE guy wins that shit, uh-uh. we just fucking Dixie Carter that shit very fast. <laughs> I mean, if I was at the arena and let's say name any former WWE guy, it could be Brody Lee, Matt Hardy, fucking Kurt Angle Jr. It doesn't fucking matter. If any of them touch the title next, start a Dixie Carter chant because there's no fucking point in that title anymore. All right, Coco. Sorry. I, I take my championship seriously. I'm excited for this. Um, I'm going Archer and Cody have to be in the finals. And I'm rooting for Sammy to go far. And, yeah, because, like, here's the thing. Can, can, I, can I play backseat Booker? Not that I've ever done this before, Booms. I'm gonna try. Cody has to beat Sean Spears or fucking I'm turning off the channel and be like, fuck it. <laughs> Wrestling's dead. Sam, and you can be like, oh, it's a huge upset. Yeah, it's a huge upset. Your title means nothing. Uh, Sammy, I think, has to beat Darby Allen. You got Cody. Um, but then again, they tease Darby Allen, so it doesn't matter. Uh, Cody goes to the finals. Lance Archer destroys Colt Cabana, even though I'm a huge Cabana fan. And then Lance, Lance, well, I'm sorry, Lance Archer fucking injures Dustin Rhodes. And then you have them in the finals. God, that's fucking money. Just take it all. Take it all. You ruin it. One second, Sean Spears. One, two, three. The tournament's over. I mean, fucking a. You're the you're the IPW, not IPW. Sorry, IPW. You're the IWGP six man tag of fucking bungholes. Whatever the fuck that title's called. <laughs> I I love I love tournaments. I love championships. Don't take this away from me, Dynamite. Do it right. Do it right, Dynamite. So. Yeah, I, I don't know. Your early predictions, now that you realize you're working with a psychopath? <laughs> oh, I've known that for about 10 years, uh, Coco. <laughs> uh, really, I know it's not. I know they're not going to win it, but my two picks would be uh, Darby Allen and Kip Sabian would be would be my pick there. That's just me. And I, I know it's you probably not going to happen, but, that's what, but if it was up to me, that's what I would do. Well, I guess, if, I mean, if you want to make it a cruiserweight thing, I don't know. I don't know. Booms, you made me sick to my stomach. <laughs> well, I mean, I just like, well, I like Darby Allen. I, I think this guy has just exploded onto the scene. He's very over. Uh, you see people paint their faces just like him. Um, I mean, he's earned some high praise. I mean, hell, just the other week, Cody compared him to Sting. So, yeah, that was, I mean, that was that. a ridiculous statement. Here's the thing, though. And then... Oh, ahead, and Booms. then uh, Kip Sabian, uh, when, when, once they put him with Penelope Ford, I mean, like everything is clicking now. Uh, I, I think the I think the guy is incredibly talented. I, I think that tandem he has now with Penelope Ford, it is it, just working. I, I think he's very talented, up and comer. Uh, 
you know, he's got potential to, to do bigger and better things. And, and I think what would be better, and I mean, you could have, uh, you know, you could have uh, Darby Allen win and have to fend off, you know, some of the guys, some of the lower card guys, or you could have uh, Kip Saving as the chicken shit heel who just keeps kind of manages to weasel his way out of the matches and and barely get out with the title, drive people crazy. I mean, there are all kinds of crazy. Yeah, stuff but you don't do that to the first champ. No, I'm just saying. Yeah, but, yeah. you know. Um, here's the thing. I just, I just I just want to throw something out there. Out of all the guys in the tournament and on the company, Darby Allen suffers the most for no audience. Because he's crazy over and like a lot of his good qualities is making the crowd go crazy. Like, I just think out of all the wrestlers, he probably needs the crowd the most. All right. Well, don't dis- I mean, don't disagree. I mean, it, you're taking. I mean, you kind of take a look. You take kind of take the wind out of the sails when you have a wrestling show without a audience. But you know, things are what they are right now. We're all going to have to get through it together and just give it a few more weeks, and then hopefully all this will, we can finally maybe try to get life back to normal here. But so in the meantime, I mean, this is just a test of character. I mean, this is a test of metal. I mean, they're going to make documentaries about this. They're going to set people down going, you know, what well, you know, wrestling right now is the only live entertainment going on in the middle of this pandemic. I want, I want to point that out. Major League Baseball not having games. Hot National Hockey League not having games. XFL canceled the rest of the season. Uh, the NFL they're doing they're still doing the draft but they're not doing it no anywhere near like they're used to. I mean, I think it's just going to be like remote locations. Everybody, you know, okay, Steelers, your pick. Okay, we pick uh, John Smith. Okay, going over to the Bengals. Okay, what do you guys say? We chose uh, John Jones. You know, it's going to be that. Uh, NASCAR, not running shows. Golf, you know, PGA, not running shows. I think the Grand Slam uh, and tennis canceled. I mean, there is nothing. You can't go to a movie theater right now. You can't go to a stage play. The only live entertainment running is professional wrestling. Yeah, so, and not all that, but good or bad, it takes balls. Um, Tony Schiavone, Cody, and Farrow <laughs> uh, as on commentary. Booms, let's break down the show best we can, brother. Opening bout, uh, Kenny Omega versus Trent. Uh, I think this was a hell of a way to kick off the show. I think it was match of the night. Um, some of the highlights there, I, I liked uh, when that power bomb uh, Omega did to Trent into the, I, I'm going to call it like a support beam, it was like a solid steel beam, threw him into that. Uh, business really picked up kind of later on in the match when Trent started going after the injured hand of Kenny Omega. And, Omega really sold it, you know, really kind of sold the desperation. As soon as he started touching, he started, you know, trying to rake his eyes. Uh, Trent was stepping on the hand. Uh, eventually it ends with a V trigger followed up by a one winged angel uh, with less than one minute to go in the match. So these guys went 19 and some change. Uh, absolutely hell of a match. Now, I got a question for you, but I want you to tell me what you thought about this opening bout here. I thought it was match of the night, but uh, what do you say? <laughs> I think it's match of the night by far. Um, it's not even close. Um, yeah, i glad that Kenny Omega's back. Uh, James Legend's a huge fan of Trent. Um, he just wanted to let everyone know on air that, you know, Trent deserves, you know, a spotlight. Um, yeah. I think, I think it was an amazing match. Um, yeah, I, I just thought I thought it was really good. It told a story, and not only that, but <clears throat> the athletes that can wrestle will benefit this from this the most. And I hope this leads somewhere down the line with uh, Kenny Omega getting a bigger push. Um, yeah, I I enjoyed this match tremendously. I don't, um, you know, after watching this, you know, I, I've got to bring up the question here, and that is, um, I don't want the best friends to break up, but why isn't Trent Beretta, or excuse me, just Trent now, just Trent, why isn't he like a single star? I mean, the guy has proven himself to be a very competent 
singles wrestler. I mean, you know, I've listened to other podcasts and stuff. I mean, Matt Morgan asked, you know, why is this guy even with uh, Chuck E.T.? Yeah. He doesn't need him. Why Why is he with him? And he had a good body of work. He had some good – I mean, hell, he wrestled a uh, singles match. Uh, I think it was for the IWGP United States Championship injured and still had a hell of a match. Uh, he's proven himself to be a good, competent – singles wrestler, I'm, I'm kind of thinking maybe, you know, I'm not saying split up the best friends, but I'm just saying I, I think Trent needs some more attention in the singles ranks. Yeah, I agree, and maybe he can do both, because the problem is the tag team division means a lot, and it's kind of stale booking to have a single run where they break it up, you know what I mean? Um but then again, if he wins a title, let's say Trent wins the TNT, TNT title, how is the other guy going to feel? So it's kind of interesting. Um, I think he should definitely be in a single run. I think he does amazing things. It's just how do you get out of stale booking? They're going to have to be creative and go with it, you know? But, yeah. And my fear – well, not fear. I guess a little bit fear, a little bit of prediction – that he'll have great matches and lose to the main eventers to pad their stats while still winning tag team matches. That's like mm-hmm. kind of my thing. It's like, oh, you need a great match? Go, Trent. All right. You know what I mean? Um, but, yeah, it, it should be interesting, and this should have been a main event. Like, I'm looking at this card, man. If you reverse the order of the booking, this might have been such a bigger win. Instead of a win, it would be a big win. Um, match of the night, main event. And as the card goes down, I think the matches get worse. But I think the yeah, I think the um, yeah, because like this, the next match should be the semi main. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just like, and also um, Dave Coco's nitpicking of booking. You never have two tag team matches in a row unless it's a tournament. Never, mm-hmm. never, 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 never. I don't know. Just the play. This was a great show. If you just fucking focused on the placement, my friends, focus on the placement. Yeah, I don't okay. know. It's maybe so it's because they're so shorthanded. Maybe it's they're so shorthanded. So, well, that, so you're so you're saying more so it's about the production. It was like the order of matches, not necessarily what yeah. actually all transpired. Yeah, like if, uh, if if you don't mind me, the first match would be the main event. The next match would be the semi main, and then I would have had uh, the Sean Spears Sammy match. You know. Then I would have the Lance Archer in the middle, and then the opening would be the Natural Nightmares and Dark Order. Or I'd reverse the tag teams. You know what I mean? I'd re- so it would be one of the tag team matches, Lance Archer, another tag team match, the women's match, then then I would have Kenny Omega. That's how I'd put the order. It just because there's two tag team matches in a row, and you just saw the two, three best matches in the beginning. So you're just sitting there going, oh, well, this is me. I'm just sitting there going, fuck, how long is this? I got to fucking talk to Boom Boom about this shit. <laughs> so, like, yeah, the the order of matches is the biggest thing I'm going to knock tonight. And I know it's super nerdy, but what, you expect something else from Coco Sports? <laughs> no, I'm about to say I would never expect anything less of you, sir. Yeah. But overall, um, yeah, the first match was amazing. And you ready to talk about the second match? Yeah, uh, real quick, we had a, just a highlight between the confrontation between uh, Chris Jericho and Matt Hardy. They just did something really quick on that one uh, with Vanguard One, and they're you know when they met in Daly's place. Uh, then we get to Hakura Shida versus Anna J. Uh, Anna J. Making her debut. Uh, from what I understand, Anna J. is a trainee at the Nightmare Factory. Uh, I, I've never heard of her before, before never seen her before. I, I think she looked pretty good. I thought this was just going to be a straight-up squash match, but uh, Anna J got a lot of offense in there. This match went about uh, five minutes. Uh, you know, she had to, she hit some knee strikes, and, fi- and you know, finally, uh, you know, she did just wasn't having enough of it, started, you know, absorbing the strikes, uh, then made a comeback there, hit her with the knee strike, dropped her with the Falcon Arrow, got the pin. So Hakura Shida gets the win. She's still, you know, ranked number one in the women's division. Um, again, I, I think it, I, I was a little surprised. I, th- I think maybe it was just 
I, I don't know if she, Anna J is signed or not, but I, I would have to believe something's up here because if it was just, if she was just somebody brought in there to take the fall, I don't know why they gave her as much offense and had uh, she to kind of I don't want to say struggle but work a little bit more than what she probably could have because if, if this was a squash match, I would have had her beat her in like two minutes, two or three minutes, three minutes tops. Can but, I lead Corso uh, you right now? I'm, I'm, I'm asking permission for Lee Corso. Not so fast, okay. my fellow friends. Um, I I agree with you. If it was a regular day, you got to eat up that time. I mean, look how fucking long those tag matches were at the end. And second off, if she is a student, you can bring her back later. You know what I mean? But I think they should bring local talent to put over the big guys all the time and the students. I thought this was great. I know why you're saying that, but in this situation, I understand why they did that, you know? Um, I mean, I've just, I mean, I just don't understand. I mean, if she's just there to get squat, I mean, they've done that. They did that last week with uh, Chico Adams uh, against Jake Hayley. They had him get squashed in like two or three minutes. So, so you true. bring out Anna J, and that's J with two Ys because she's hot with two Ts. Um, I'm sorry, I apologize for that bad joke. Um, <laughs> Booms. So I, I guess maybe there's something to it. Or, or then again, I'm reading it too much into it. But by the way, I had asked this question here, Britt Baker. Excuse me, Doctor Britt Baker was was at ringside for this match, and she was talking some shit there with her Kurashita. But towards the end, when things got a little heated, she did two things. That one, she took off her shoe, like I'll whack you with my shoe, which I thought was strange. But after the match, and this was what really caught me as strange. She had a chicken sandwich in her other hand. Yeah, well, you she need a shoe like to eat a chicken sandwich. Like a chicken sandwich, and then was talking shit and like you know getting up in the grill of her Kurashita. Am I the only one who just didn't who noticed that and was like, what the fuck? Okay, I can understand the shoe. You know, okay, I'm gonna take off my shoe and hit you. In. Okay, it's not. It's kind of girly, but who cares? But that was just odd. It was just like completely out of place. It's like, okay, she just was eating a chicken sandwich at the time. Yeah. I, it, the it, thing it, is, it. I don't know if it was Chick Fil A or Popeyes. I think it was Chick Fil A because. I'm fat and I know chicken sandwiches and it looks a little bit like Chick Fil A. <laughs> like this is where this is where the expertise finally comes in. <laughs> yes, I've been, I've been I've been training for this my whole life. Um, I I don't give a fuck about Britt Baker at the highest fucking level. It's not even fucking heel heat. It's but just sir, like what is your stance on chicken sandwiches? Um, it chicken sandwiches uh, seriously because yeah, fuck Britt Baker. Um, my, my view on chicken sandwiches is either they taste amazing or horrible. There's no average chicken sandwich. You know, like, hmm, that's an average chicken sandwich. No, it's either horrible or the best thing you've ever tasted. And, you know, there's no in between. Have you ever had an average chicken sandwich? Because you're a fucking liar. Yes, yes I have. <laughs> no, you're not. You're a fucking liar. That chicken sandwich sucked. It's either the best thing in the world or the worst thing in the world. There's no in between. <laughs> I've had a bad chicken sandwich. I mean, I've just had like the mediocre chicken sandwiches, and then I've had Chick Fil A, and that's God's chicken, y'all. So you need to wash out your heathen mouth before you partake. <laughs> well, here's my thing: Who thought that fucking I'd even be an extremist about chicken sandwiches? There is no fucking regular chicken sandwich. It's either the best or the worst. <laughs> Booms. Did you ever think I'd take an extremist view on you this? Know, you know, uh, to be honest, no, I, I didn't think, I, I, you know, I, there's, an, I can understand passion, you know, about things. I mean, I understand you're passionate about championships. I understand you're passionate, you know, to, to a certain extent about, you know, in your opinion on contract signings. I know you're passionate about how champions should be presented. You know, I never, ever thought in my life that, you know, it, chicken sandwiches would be up there. I just thought, hey, let me bring up the chicken sandwich, bring a little levity to the situation. And here's yeah. Coco's like, throws off his hat, like, God damn it, let me tell you something, brother. <laughs> First off, um, she, she had a, a amazing match. Second off, fuck Burt Baker. Third off, I'm fucking from New Jersey. Listen, New Jersey doesn't have much, but we have fucking sandwiches. We take our sandwiches very seriously. I remember one of my coworkers was like, oh, here's the best sandwich. And like, I fucking like threw it in his face. I was like, don't fucking talk to me about sandwiches. Dude, I take sandwiches as fucking seriously as I take championships and booking of pro wrestling. Maybe even more. There is no okay chicken sandwich. <laughs> there isn't. Like, I just remember he's like, well, how do you make your sandwich? And I was like explaining the sauces. And it was like 12 minutes into this conversation. 
And he's like, well, so you just put it on? I was like, what? You just put the sauce on the sandwich? No, you fucking idiot. You have a sauce bowl. And then you fucking put your sauces in the bowl. And you make sure it's the right thickness. Then you put it on the bread. Just put fucking sauce on your sandwich, you fucking amateurs. <laughs> I take sandwiches pretty fucking serious. Yeah, yeah, you do. I oh, Dude, I love sandwiches, dude. Oh, God. Sandwiches are great. You know what? Japan has a lot of great things. Sushi, pro wrestling, boobies. But, damn, they fucking suck at making sandwiches. I'm going home, boys. I'm coming home. <laughs> I want the best goddamn sandwiches in the world. The best sandwiches in the world come from the Northeast. That's just science. Anyway, booms. Um, Kanagawa girl won. Woohoo! That's where I yeah, live. I live uh, in Kanagawa, so I root for her. <laughs> well, I... Hey, all, all good for it here. Um, after that, we had a hype package, uh, but the ongoing feud between John Moxley and Jake Hager. I think this was nicely done. Uh, they're going to have a match in a couple of weeks. They're getting, you know, um, Moxley over is the guy who just doesn't give a fuck. You know, he's going to take on all comers. He's going after the guy who choked him out, who ambushed him before that big match a couple, about three weeks ago. Uh, Hager, you know, putting himself over undefeated in Bellator. Uh, one thing I actually liked that they did was they had uh, Sammy Guevara and Chris Jericho in, in also in that package, hyping him up. And I actually kind of like the fact that Jericho was just like, you know what? We don't fight in the inner circle. We don't, you know, we don't yeah, fight I amongst ourselves. We don't use each other's finishers, you know. And if he wins the championship, good for him. I love that. Yeah. Um, two things I want to give a compliment to. One, I love the fact that they're using Bellator and he's undefeated. Awesome. Second, this is two weeks in a row. I don't watch Dark. I'm usually like a week or two weeks behind on Dark. And two weeks in a row, they threw a little thing that happened on Dark that made me regret not watching Dark. They're doing a great job at making me feel guilty for skipping Dark and wanting to watch Dark. Two weeks in a row. So, AEW, good job. All right, booms. Next. Uh, next here we were they were doing, they were doing a setup here for Lance Archer's debut. They had Jake Roberts. Uh, he's saying that you know he's going to destroy his opponent. Uh, you know, stop playing games with us, Cody. You know, you know, you know, you don't don't gamble. You know, casinos. You know, they you know they don't you know set up shop there to lose. They set up shop to win. You know, maybe you got sense enough to be afraid. But he says, you know, then he made a comment that it looks like Brandy's wearing the pants in the family. Then we bring out um, Marco Stunt and then uh, Lance Archer. And this was not pretty. I, I, I kind of, I understand why they did this. You know, Marco Stunt's the smallest guy in the locker room, so why not put him up against the biggest guy in the locker room now? Contrasting of size. And then, you know, Marco can just make it like he's just been fucking murdered, which he about did. Um, I don't. I think Marco got, maybe got like an Instagram, but that was really about it. Uh, Archer just beat the shit out of him, hit him with the derailer, uh, put him in a choke slam that looked like he was about to finish him, but he pulled him up, hit him with the blackout, gets the pin. Uh, wasn't over there. He choke slammed uh, Marco from the ring apron onto Billy and Austin Gunn, on, and everybody was standing at ringside. I think that was it was a brutal match. I I understand why they picked the opponent. I just kind of wish they wouldn't have picked uh, Marco just because I just think Marco's stunt getting the shit kicked out of him by Lance Archer's low-hanging fruit. And I guess if you're going to do the debut, go ahead and just go ahead and pick the low-hanging fruit and get it out of the way. But uh, very big, very intimidating guy. Good, good get by AEW. Uh, Jake Roberts before the match. Uh, I love that. I hope he's working with people on promos because that's who I definitely want to be coaching me up. If I'm, you know, if I've got questions about promos and how to get things over, how to get my message across, and how to do it, you know, how to tighten up, do it to get the most impact out of the, you know, fewest words possible. So I, I think it was a, I think it was a good debut. I, I agree, and even though I, I'm gonna be a little bit hypocritical here, but maybe it's because I'm an asshole. I think this match should have been shorter. I think this match should have been shorter, but um, yeah, I'm excited to see what Jake the Snake and Lance Archer can do. 
um overall enjoyed it and uh i love the fact that commentary mentions stuff that the fans are thinking like the commentary protects like they kept mentioning how his partners weren't here his team wasn't here i like that a lot of companies would just have ignored that so i was a big fan of that all right next moves next we had another uh vignette with the dark order we had Brody Lee standing up giving a presentation. He asked a, a minion to stand tall with him, and he said, thank you, Mr. Lee. He's like, no, 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 it's Mr. Brody Lee, and he went up scaring the shit out of him and, told, and kicked him out of the room, and another one of the minions there, he yawned. Of course, this is a riff on Vince McMahon. It's like, why are you tired? What reason do you have to be tired? There's nothing open. You know, you can't be yawning. Tiredness is a sign of weakness. Now get the hell out of here. So he kicks him out of the room. Uh, this leads us into our tag match. We have the... Uh, before we get to the thing. tag match, can I just say something okay. about that, sir? Sorry. Okay. Okay. Um, I love everything about this. The Dark Order was fucking garbage. Brody Lee was lost on a WWE roster. There's things. Kenta Bullet Club. Brody Lee, Dark Order. Lance Archer, AEW. There's things that when it matches up, you're like, oh, that's better. Like a lot of Japanese New Japan fans were mad that Lance Archer left. I think Lance Archer is way better in AEW. And I love Lance Archer and I love New Japan. You know what I mean? But there's some things that match up, like Kenta and Bullet Club. Brody with the Dark Order doing the Vince McMahon skits is pure fucking gold. Now, booms. You know, when we first started this, we used to you know, be a little rough around the edges. We cursed too much. We said stuff that we couldn't take back. We've changed. We've grown. And I've grown with the times. And I've seen on the Twitter machine, the social media, people thinking that it's gone too far, that they're just making fun of Vince McMahon right now. You know, I was going to ask you that question. Do you think it comes off his pen? <sighs> I'm going to be sensitive. If you think this is coming off as petty... Booms, I'm being sensitive. Go fuck yourself. You're a fucking piece of shit and you should fucking die. This is why. This motherfucker ruined pro wrestling. This motherfucker ruined goddamn lives. He ruined fucking everything and you fucking worship him. I'm feeling, starting to feel like Daniel Bryan as a vegan. Fuck you. This is the fucking devil. He fucking deserves to be attacked. And I don't even fucking hate Vince in real life. In real life, he's a fucking douchebag, but he's okay. But to fucking be like, he doesn't deserve this? Are you fucking out of your fucking gourd? This is like, A, hilarious. B, he fucking deserves way worse than this. Do, like you, think can... of it, do you think of it as like punching up? No. I think it's fucking perfect. It is a guy that fucking destroyed an industry and destroyed lives. And you're fucking making fun of him. And you're letting out steam. You bitches wouldn't make Stone Cold happen. You don't know. If you're against this, fucking throw away your 316 shirts. You right, are well, fucking, you are conversation, weak. You are What if the shoe was on the other foot? Hey, hilarious. What if, but there's, there's... What if... Um, okay. I'm going to say, if, if the shoe was on the other foot, what if NXT created a character... Uh, it was just a guy who was getting money from his dad, <laughs> and he was just idolizing all the wrestlers. And they did that on NXT. With you know, you know, would you still say the same? Like, oh no, oh, it's perfectly fine. Two, two, two things: a hilarious, b completely fine. C, this is what the fucking Attitude Era was about. D, Vince McMahon is an evil fucking asshole. I, even the closest people to him say that. Like, no. Like, no, we've become so fucking sensitive. Thank you, John Cena. I blame John Cena. I'm mad enough to put all my problems on one person. We've become so fucking sensitive that go back and watch the Monday Night Wars. You guys would piss your pants and cry. You'd just shit your pants. That's what you'd do. You'd be like, oh my god. They said that about Vince. They said that about Hogan. My, my sensitiveness. This is fucking hilarious. And it's to a man that completely fucking deserves it. And here's another thing. Steal a line from Eric Bischoff. NXT is attached to WWE. WWE is number one in the world. Number one never acknowledges number two. Number two does everything in the world to attack number one. That's just fucking science. That's Eric Bischoff 101. 
yeah, I people are like, oh, it's gone through, dude. You're fucking. You're lucky. My fat ass is a fucking loser. Because if I was running this shit, Brody Lee would be ninety percent of the goddamn segments. <laughs> I'd be like, oh, I'm gonna wait till this motherfucker punches me in the face. Jesus Christ, the Monday Night Wars would have never happened. Way to go. Way to go. Be, be proud of yourself. If you ever like, oh, I think Brody Lee's gone too far. Fuck you. You just killed the Monday Night Wars. You did. You single-handedly did. Look at you. Look yourself in a mirror. You're proud of that? <laughs> Booms. I think I handled that pretty classy. Yeah, I think you did. <laughs> I, th- I think fucking, I think I, I was sensitive to their needs. I, you know what? I'm giving myself a Barry Horowitz. Did you hear it? That was a good Barry Horowitz. I'm proud of myself. Yeah, it was. It was. <laughs> Booms, you want to play devil's advocate or want to say anything else about it? No, I mean, I just think, I mean, I, the jury's still out on it for me. I'm just like, part of me, it's like, I understand why they're doing it, but the other part of me is just like, okay, you know what, dude, you're, you're at greener pastures. Just, just, it's just time to move on. You know, just, you know, fuck them, whatever. Just keep going. I say drag them to the fucking mud. <laughs> just keep it going. My whole thing is, too, it's also entertainment. You know what I mean? I mean, you fuckers, and I'm talking about the human race here. If you're a human, you're a fucker. You fuckers are fucking masturbating over the Tiger King, but are offended over this? Get your shit together. <laughs> Get your shit together. Tiger King, me and, ba- me and Bear Friend watched that. That's pretty good. Yeah, I keep. I'm probably have to get my Netflix account back because I've heard so much about it. I may have to just have to check it out for myself. It's just, it's just crazy people being crazy, but they have all the footage of the crazy people being crazy. Ah, you know, it's indie wrestling except someone decided to record it all and it has tigers instead. <laughs> all right, booms. Let's talk. Let's talk the one of the fucking twelve tag team matches that end the night. I'm being a little sarcastic. All right, we had um, the Natural Nightmares taking on the Dark Order, being presented by number eight and number nine. I don't know who was eight. I don't know who was nine. I don't know who were under the hoods, but um, uh, they had, it was a fairly straightforward match. Um, they the, the bad guys went on offensive kind of early. Um, Marshall, uh, QT Marshall went back and got the hot tag on Rhodes. Rhodes ran wild. Uh, they did a cannonball to the floor, uh, a dive to the outside, and they had like this kind of fish. It was like a suplex spear combination. I, I don't think I've really seen it, but it was enough to get the win. Uh, so the natural nightmare win. Uh, afterwards, Brody Lee comes out, and then he power bombed the minion who got pinned. Uh, and the other one left the other one alone, and so that's how that segment ended. Uh, um, a, I've seen QT Marshall wrestle in front of two people. I'm so happy for his success. Florida guys, you know how you know how I got Florida guys back, booms. You know it. Um, yeah. Second off, Dustin Rhodes, former ACW champ. Third off, the Natural Nightmares. These were two guys going nowhere that recap packaged themselves. You know what I mean? Like Dustin Rhodes' mm-hmm. single run was pretty much what are you, where are you going to go from this? I like the natural nightmares a lot. I really do. Um, I love the fact that they're wearing masks and their numbers. Because as a booker and a nerd, I'm like, that's how you pad wins and losses. I love that he came out and they teased like he was going to fight them and then went out, power bombed them, and then just looked at the other guy. This wasn't a great booked. This wasn't, how do I wear this? It wasn't a great match. It was greatly booked to tell a story. I, I enjoyed this one a lot. It just broke the one of fucking 8,476,000 Dave Kuko rules. Never tag team matches back to back. But yeah, I enjoyed it a lot. Booms, next. Uh, next we had pretty, uh, it's a strange segment, but it was actually, I wanted to be, I, at least I think it was entertaining. So we had Chris Jericho, he was cutting a promo in his hot tub with a little bit of the bubbly. Uh, and he was calling the elite the biggest fools on April Fool's Day. Told Nick to stay at home. Uh, but he got as he was talking, he got interrupted by Vanguard One. Chris Jericho got out of the hot tub. He was wearing pants. We don't know why he was wearing pants, but thank <laughs> God he was wearing pants. But he was wearing regular pants. Uh, he still offered 
Vanguard one, a uh, spot in the inner circle, and even hooked a little, little tiny, like, you know, made for children inner circle t shirt on Vanguard one. Vanguard one started taking off. He threw the bottle of bubbly at him, this, and he said, You know, you can't disrespect me like that. You know what? Release the hounds, and all the, like, these dogs come out. I Dude, mean, we're it was talking about like chihuahuas, Pomeranians. There's like five dogs, that just random dogs came out just barking, and I was just like, and that one Chihuahua just chilling up on the porch, like, yeah, 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 y'all, y'all get this, yeah, I don't care. <laughs> so I, I don't know why, but I genuinely laughed when all that shit. When he said release the hounds and all like these, these little like you know house dogs come running out, I legitly laughed. Yeah. Um, here's the thing. This is a fucking dumbass segment and story. Jericho might be the best entertainer in the world. You replace Jericho with anyone. It fucking flops. This guy is pure fucking entertainment. At one time, he was the best wrestler in the world. At one time, he was the best sports entertainer in the world. And now, he's just the best entertainer in the world. You know what I mean? I I mean, maybe maybe I'm giving Jericho too much praise. I do live on Jericho's Island, a.k.a. Japan. <laughs> Here, Chris Jericho is praised beyond belief. Like, Chris Jericho trips on ice and we're like, stupid. That was supposed to happen. You know what I mean? Like, we love him so much here. Booms, replace Chris Jericho in these segments. Who can fucking carry this stupid-ass segment? You know, I don't know who, who active right now who has that kind of range. Yeah, he, he's just fucking beyond amazing. So, yeah, Jericho, fucking 87 thumbs up. Love you, brother. Like... Yeah. All right, Booms. Uh, you want to talk next? Yeah, after that, we got an update on Nick Jackson. Uh, he's feeling a lot better. Uh, Matt brought in a ring, so those two started practicing. They started kind of, you know, bumping, going back and forth. And then they asked, okay, you ready? And Nick says, no, not, no I'm not ready to come back just yet. But uh, I think it was okay for what it is. And by the way, congratulations to Nick Jackson on his uh, son, Michael. So that's his third child. Congrats. Yeah, there's a there's a thing going on in Twitch to joke the youngest Bucks and Michael Jackson will be one of them. So, yeah, congrats and I don't know. I, I, I like where this is going, and I also like that he isn't kind of like himself. So overall, I enjoyed the segment. Uh, you know, all right, all right, booms, main event time, aka Next should have been the opening match. Next, we get to the main event. I mean, this is, I mean, I understand why they put it here. I mean, they're hyping up their the TNT Championship tournament. I mean, because all of these are going to be matches. Uh, you know, Cody's going to be taking on Sean Spears, and the Darby Allen's going to take on Sandy Guevara. So, this is kind of like a preview of that. So, that's why they put this together. Um, I think it was a pretty, it was with TV time remaining. So, I, I think it was good. I mean, these are two rivalries that, you know, they put the, they put, you know, two teams together based off rivalries, you know, particularly, you know, Cody's, Cody and Spears and Allen and Guevara. Uh, I did like, there's a lot I actually did like about the match. Uh, a couple of spots that really, really got, really got me, uh, one that got me chuckling was the fact that when Sean Spears and Sammy Guevara started gambling on who could hold up uh, Darby on the longest for the delayed suplex, and then it was like, okay, now I got it. No, okay, double or nothing. Okay, you're on. I, I don't know if they're going to make that a thing where Sean Spears is like, just become like this compulsive gambler or something. But <laughs> I thought it was near a spot. But um, when Sean Spears goes back in there, uh, Darby Allen reverses it, and Sammy Guevara just you know takes all the money and pop, puts it in his trunks right there, you know, without anybody seeing it. I enjoyed that. I enjoyed the coffin, the coffin drop off the uh, steel girder. Um, it keeps going. Uh, and eventually Cody gets back in the ring. Sp uh, Spears he hit a frog splash on Cody. Sammy Guevara was go was gonna go in with a chair, but Darby Allen uh, took it away, and that and he saved um, saved Cody and Spears rolled him up for the one two three, and then you just had the bad guys win. Darby Allen looking completely dejected. Uh, Cody's like trying to like you know trying to calm him down, be like, dude, it's cool, you did a good job. And then um, 
Allen just clocks Cody. Uh, so I don't think that's going to be an all-out heel turn. I just think it's more just frustration starting to boil over with Darby Allen, thinking, you know, hey, I can do better. You know, I, I've got to do better than this. You know, hype it up the tournament. So I, I think it was a, I think it was a pretty good match. I, you know, I, I know. Let's just per- forget where he is on the on, on the spot. It, the match itself, Coco. Do you think it was a good match? Let, let's just take it. Let's okay. Let's go with your suggestion. Let's say this opens up. Let's say they do everything, but they do it the first match of the night. Is it still a good match? Yeah, it's it's a way better match at the opening night because when Darby, like, it ends the show with Darby Allen turning on Cody. You do that in the beginning. Me first off. It's fresh in the tournament. You're like, here's the tournament. Here's guys in the tournament. I like the booking. I just don't like the placement. Darby Allen leaves after he hits Cody. Bam, you keep telling that story. I don't think that's a big enough shock to be a cliffhanger. And um, Sammy, Sammy's just amazing. Um, we're going to be doing something idiot on him. I think highly of him. And I like the betting problem that Sean Spears has. Overall, I thought it was amazing. And camera work. They made... It the Darby Allen turn on Cody seem important with the zoom in on his wife. You know what I mean? Because then she's playing a part of the crowd and you know how they feel. So they were being very creative with camera angles and I respect that and like that a lot. Um overall I thought it was a great match. Just thought it was a bit long and they broke the four hundred and seventy six rule of Dave Coco fucking watches too much wrestling <laughs> and once is something you know they just broke one of my 476 rules booms that you understand but overall i really enjoyed it um i worry about sean spears future because like that fucking record of one in fucking a zillion you know what i mean i don't know how you bounce back from that um but you know if he has a gambling problem and maybe that's why he's losing i don't know but yeah uh overall i i enjoyed it a lot and i i thought it was great um, like I said, I still give it a huge win. I know I complained a lot because I'm an asshole. I still give it a huge win. I just think match placement could have been better. Um, yeah, overall, huge win. Booms, you want to talk about anything else? You know, no, I, I, again, this is just something that I want to just bring up back. You know, I made this point earlier in the show, but I'll just keep saying it. You know, right now, professional wrestling is the only live entertainment going on right now during the coronavirus pandemic. And hats off to these guys for, you know, this is an incredibly difficult situation. Um, I know that with my job, part of it is now requiring me to have to work from home during all this. And, you know, because we can't, I can't stop doing what I'm doing. And, you know, AEW, WWE, you know, whoever, a lot of these companies just could have just folded up and just said, look, guys, we're just going to have to be on a hiatus until, you know, we get off lockdown. Uh, no, they, they've pressed forward and they're still doing shows. But one thing that AEW d- differentiates itself from WWE's products is AEW's putting on some really, really good shows under the circumstances. I mean, they've experimented a little bit. They're seeing what works, what doesn't work. I mean, this has never happened before, so they're writing, they're doing all this stuff on the fly here. This is going to be like a template in case of like any, any kind of national emergency ever comes back. This is going to be the template that's used. Like, hey, well, remember that time during the pandemic? Remember when AEW ran those shows? Well, here's what they had to do. Well, this is what we need to do. There's that. Um, I mean, they're going to sit people in chairs, you know, 10, 15, 20 years from now, and they're going to talk about this. They're like, oh, yeah, I remember that time during the pandemic. Here's what we had to do. We knew we had to do something different. We had we had these certain federal guidelines that we had to adhere by, and here's how we managed to put on a good show while still falling within the, you know, within the rules in guidelines and regulations. Uh, I mean, I, I really can't praise these guys enough. You know, the, this two hours, just two hours of escapism, you really don't know how much you need it until you actually start watching it. Uh, and so just my hat's off to everybody with AEW doing I mean, they're putting on good shows with a skeleton crew because uh, you know they're not happening to everybody, everybody in the building at the same time. I, I think it's just... Call up exactly who you need, use them, get them out of the building, get them out of there. And but they're still, but not only are they doing it, they're doing it well, which really says something about the you know 
and for a company that's what two still within two years of its existence is still is is doing this is just mind blowing. So hats off to them. And as a wrestling fan, I real I, I appreciate it. So that's my two cents for the jar, Coco. Yeah, definitely. And with all the it's going on in the world, you know, granted I yelled at you about, you know, Vince McMahon and sandwiches, but it's better to have that going on than what the what's going on in the world. So like I say, escapism is one of the most important things in the world and just be safe and AEW, WWE and you know, I think they're the only ones doing it. I could be wrong. Thank you for keeping us entertained and even if we love or hate what's going on, it's giving our mind off something else and I think we need that now more than ever. And I always say this because I just see people losing their shit. No matter what happens, keep your humanity. You know, mm-hmm. just just keep your cool, keep your humanity. And who knows what's going to happen. Hopefully, hopefully, you know, it ends soon. But who knows? Maybe this is the future. I don't know. I'm just saying if it gets worse, gets better, keep your humanity. You know, be kind to each other. That's it. All right, Booms. AEW, overall, huge win. And thank you for giving us something to yell and scream about that isn't yelling and screaming at each other. And for that, AEW, I tip my hat to you. And WWE, I'm probably going to watch WrestleMania this year just because it's going to be so weird and different. And I don't, yeah. And we plan on making a lot more videos. Uh, Jerry's been working hard on CocoSports.net. David Cooey's been working hard at CocoSports.net. Boom Boom has been doing shows when he can. So hopefully, you know, we'll just keep making content and it distracts you because it's definitely distracting us, us making it. So much love. And, um, yeah, uh, I got some good news, Booms. I did a 24-hour stream on Twitch. We're almost at 500 followers. I'm officially retired. I'm only working part-time, but my school's not open, so there's that. And I hope, you know, I hope that there, that I want to do 33% Twitch, 33% online content, and 33% writing. That's what I eventually want my future life to be. And the first step was retiring and going part-time, so that's exciting. And um, my next book is coming out. There's a publishing date and all that. So, try to do. Let's do this. And uh, I know I'm just plugging stuff for the sake of plugging stuff. Twitch.tv, Coco Sports. But put win loss tie. And if you made it this far, put one thing that's good about your life going on right now. Booms. What's one good thing about your life right now? We'll end it with that. Uh, one good thing. You know, I've got a loving family. You know, yeah. I, you know, not trying to be that guy, but yeah. Um, you know, my wife, my stepdaughter, absolutely amazing. We're soldiering through this. You know, I'm still working. My um, daughter's still working. Wife is going to be out, be on the shelf for about a month now until this thing blows over. But uh, we're we're happy. We're healthy. You know, and that's, you know, all things considered, you know, that that's all that really matters right now. All right. So down in the comments, win, loss, tie. If you made it this far, just one thing that's going great in your life. Um, sometimes that helps, man. All right. Booms, I love you. Booms, I love that you fucking come by and see us, see me on Twitch, brother. That means a lot because, like, the thing is, I know you probably are like, I fucking hate this. <laughs> I'm just here to support a friend. You ever, like, you ever do something entertainment wise and you look out on the stage and you see your friend and your friend's only there because it's you? <laughs> That's how I feel like when you enter the Twitch chat. I'm like, he doesn't want to be here, but he's here for me. And I love you for that. All right. Twitch.tv, Coco Sports, CocoSports.net, YouTube, Awkward in Japan, buy our book. Oh, so many plugs. We we got to put links down to doobly do one day. A lot of stuff's going on. Shout out to Wrestling Ranting. And with that, I am over. Ba-na-na-na-na-na. Hey, 